Hey, what's going on? One of my clients asked me to recreate this effect as seen on magnetism.fr. Now we scroll into view on the footer and we have this red ball that drops into view. And then as I move the mouse, the red ball is attracted to the mouse position. And you can see that it's attracted only while I'm moving the mouse. And when I let go, it drops back down due to the force of gravity or the apparent gravity simulation. So we're gonna go ahead and simulate physics here. I'm gonna use P5 and let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so in P5, we have our two basic setup and draw functions. Now let's go ahead and just start with a class of ball. And the class is gonna need a constructor and I'm gonna wanna pass an X value, a Y value and a size of the ball to this constructor. And I'll open and close curly brackets here. And within the constructor is where we define the starting parameters of the ball. So the ball is gonna have that this.x and we'll set that equal to the value of x that we pass into our constructor. We'll set this.y equal to our value of y. And we'll set this.size equal to the size value. Okay, now our ball is going to need a function to actually display itself on screen. So I'm gonna call that the render function. And all we're gonna do is call the p5js ellipse function. And we'll give it our this.x, this.y, and this.size. Now, in order to create a ball on the screen, we need a way to track that. So I'm gonna create a global variable and we'll just say let ball equal, actually, we're not gonna initialize it yet. We're just gonna say let ball. And then we'll initialize it in our setup function where we can say ball equals to new capital B ball and then pass it the X, Y, and size that we wanna give it. So that thing was kind of up near the top left. So let's just give it a value. Actually, we'll send it to 50, 50 and a size of 40, something like that. And now we need to actually call the render function within our draw function. So now we can say ball.render. And if I hit play here, we should see something on the screen. And yes, we have our gray background and our ball up here in the top left. Now we need to actually make this thing drop, right? So let's start coding in some gravity. Now to do gravity, what I wanna do is have an update function here where each time the draw, is, the draw function is called, I'm gonna call this ball's update function. And that update function is going to update a ball velocity, um, or actually it's gonna update the ball position via velocity, and it's also gonna update the velocity via acceleration. So this is where our kind of physics simulation is coming into play. So let's set this dot V for velocity equal to create vector of, we'll set the initial velocity to zero, and this dot A for acceleration equal to create vector also of zero. Now these vectors are really convenient for a way to work with X, Y positions in P5. So rather than saying this dot X and this dot Y, let's change this to this dot P equals create vector. And we'll set that to the X and Y value passed in in our constructor. So I can get rid of this dot X. And now when I'm referencing the position, I need to say this dot P dot X and this dot P dot Y. So we should be good to go with how we've created that. Now within our update function, we're gonna use the classical Euler method here, which is just a numerical way of approximating differential equations. Don't be scared, we're actually just gonna add two values together. So we'll call this dot velocity dot add, and the dot add function exists on the vector type in P5. And we'll just add this dot acceleration to that. And then we'll call this dot P dot add or this dot V. So all we're doing is we're adding the acceleration to the velocity and then we're adding the velocity to the position. So this is how we're gonna go ahead and update our position uh, based on some sort of acceleration that we're passing here. Now we need to actually call this update function. So let's call ball.update up here. And I'm not gonna create the, to create the gravity, let's just set the initial gravity to like something 0.5 here in the constructor. And if I play, you can see we get our ball dropping. So we've already kind of introduced this pretty cool little natural physics simulation to our piece here. Now, it doesn't make much sense for it to fall past the floor, so let's create an edges function. And within our edges function, we need to check if our y position is greater than the height of the canvas. So we'll say if this dot p dot y is greater than or equal to height, then what we wanna do is reverse the direction of our velocity in the y axis. So we'll say this dot v dot y times equals negative one. Now you might be inclined to say dot molt, which is a function that exists on the vector object. But again, we're accessing the y value here, not the, not the velocity vector, which is this one. So we have to use times equals there uh, for the y position. 
So we've got that in our edges function. Now let's go ahead and call it after the update function here. And if we run that, hopefully we see our ball bounce off the floor. Now you'll notice it's a little bit jacked up down here. And the reason is that we're just checking the height against the Y position. And the Y position of the ball is right in the center of the ball. So let's go ahead and uh, if we say this dot P dot Y plus this dot size divided by two, then we should be good to go where we're bouncing right off the floor there. And it's not perfect, but it's good enough for what we want to do here. Okay, now our ball is being ridiculously bouncy. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of air resistance or friction or drag or whatever you want to call it. All we're going to do is define a function called friction and scroll down a little bit more here. Open and close curly brackets and we'll say this dot v dot molt. So now we're multiplying each velocity uh, vector, the x and the y, and we're going to multiply both of them times something like 0 0.98. We're just like uh, taking 98% of the velocity value each time that friction gets called. And so speaking of that, we have to actually call it up here ball dot friction uh, within our draw function. And we'll go ahead and play now. And so now it's bouncing a lot less, but we're noticing that we're getting this weird behavior where the ball disappears below the floor. And what we can do to fix that real quick is just when we're detecting edges, we can just set the this dot p dot y equal to what do we need to set it to height uh, minus this dot size divided by two. So the size of the ball. And now if we play, we should see it bounces off the floor quite a bit better there. And it's not bouncing like crazy. And so we can move on to our last step, which is creating the force of attraction between our mouse position and the ball itself. Now, what we can do for that is define a function called attract. And within attract, we will go ahead and get the position of our mouse. So we'll say, uh, Let's say, yeah, const mouse equals to create vector of what do we want to create a vector? We want to create a mouse X. So this is the mouse's X position and the mouse Y position. All right. And now we need to create the vector that points from our mouse to the ball or actually from the ball to the mouse in this case. So we'll say const from ball to mouse equal. We're going to call the static function that exists on vector of subtraction. Uh, if you've studied vector, if you've studied vector math, which probably most people who've gone through high school have, then you know that subtracting vectors from each other gets a vector that points back at the thing or whatever. I don't want to go ahead and des describe it. Just go ahead into Google or ChatGPT and search vector math and you'll get more than you want probably. Anyway, so we're going to subtract this dot P from mouse. So those are our two vectors. And then what we can do is we have our from ball to mouse is we are going to add that to the acceleration. So acceleration dot add uh, from ball to mouse. Now I'm a little worried that this might get kind of crazy. Let's go ahead and see what happens and then we'll fix it uh, as we go. So we've called update. Let's go ahead and add ball dot attract right here. And let's see what happens. So nothing happens it's completely broken um and that's fine so and actually if i'm replaying really quick i don't even know if this will be captured on the video but i can see the ball going from the top left like straight to the bottom right and it's probably like three frames that i'm actually seeing this so i got the math wrong and i'm providing the force in the wrong direction and i'm also applying way too much force so what we can do here is let's say from ball to mouse.normalize. And what normalize does is it normalizes our vector to a magnitude of one so that we know that if it's like really big, then now it's just one. And then we can go ahead and multiply it by something to make it smaller. So dot multiply, I don't know, 0 0.5, something like that for now. And if I play now, okay, it's going a lot, a bit slower. Let's slow it down even more with 0.1. Now we can actually see what's going on on the screen and we can see that I did my math wrong. But if I multiply this by negative 0.1, now I can see it's attracted to my mouse position. So that's good. And if I actually bring my mouse on screen, we can see it worked for just a second there and then it flies away again. Now, the problem that we're having is we're adding all these accelerations to our this dot a. So something we can do is in our update function, we'll just set that back to zero. So this dot a dot set mag for set magnitude, we'll just set the magnitude equal to zero. And now if I play, we can see, okay, everything's a lot more under control now, and the ball is kind of hovering around our mouse position. 
So we're getting really close to the final effect that we want. I think it's too slow now. So let's dial this back up, maybe negative 0.5. Okay, and now I can see that this is behaving really close to how I want in our final product. There's a number of things I can change. I want to make the ball red. I want to make it bounce off the left and right walls. And I want to take up the whole space. So let's start working on some things now. So within our Create Canvas here, I'll just change this to Window Width and Window Height. And if I play, okay, now we've got a better looking canvas. And let's start working on our edges. So we'll say if uh, this.p.x uh, plus this.size divide by two is greater than zero, then we will just copy this stuff right here, but we're gonna do this with regards to x. So this.p.x equals uh, not height, but zero, and it's going to be plus, oops, plus size divided by two. And this.v.x inverts and then we'll also check for it to be uh, actually greater than width. And in this case, I need to say less than zero. So this was for the left edge here. And if this.p.x plus this.size divided by two is greater than width, then this.p.x equals width minus. Okay, I got this wrong. This needs to be minus here. So now it's bouncing off the left wall, it's bouncing off the right wall, and it's bouncing off the bottom here. So I think we're good to go. The last thing is that it shouldn't react to our mouse right away. It should wait a little bit. And an easy way I can do that is just waiting for our frame count. So up here in the draw function, uh, before we call attract, we can say if frame count is greater than, I don't know, let's start with 120. So we'll play 120 frames with gravity without attracting the ball before anything happens. So, oh man, that is really slow. And then after it starts attracting to our mouse. Okay, so we want a way to add gravity from within our draw function. So let's go ahead and say ball.addGravity. Actually, we'll just call it gravity. And I don't know why these quotes ended up there, but we'll come in here and say gravity. And all we'll do is this dot a dot add a create vector and we'll pass a vector of zero and one. And then we should be able to reset this to zero within our constructor. So what's going on here? We're calling gravity. We're adding the vector to gravity within the y direction and that's getting called each draw cycle. So let's see if that improves what we get. Okay. So gravity is taking effect and then now our ball is starting to be attracted to our mouse. So it's not getting attracted to the mouse enough now to overcome the force of gravity. So let's go ahead and just multiply by negative one here and see if we get something that works. And it's starting to get closer. So we can just start playing with this. So negative two and it's waiting, it's waiting. And now, yes, it's attracted to our mouse when we move it, but it's always getting attracted to the mouse. So this needs to actually be within a mouse move function. So what we'll do for that is come right up here and P5 gives us this function mouse moved, mouse moved, which gets fired every time the mouse is moved and we'll call attract within that and then actually ball dot attract. And we should be able to, actually we'll just cut this here and move it down here. So now let's go ahead and play. So gravity, not attracted to the mouse. Yes, attracted to the mouse. And then only when I'm moving the mouse does the ball get attracted. Oh, let's change the ball to red. Let's make it red. Uh, so we drew the background is this gray color, which I think it's actually gray in our, um, I think it's gray on the magnetism website and we can change the fill. We can just do it up in the setup function because we're not going to change it there. So let's just pass a red value of 255 and green and blue will be zero. So now we get, oh, we need no stroke as well. All right, ball drops in, boom, and now it's attracted to our mouse position. So that's awesome. We've pretty much finished this simulation. Now, the next step to do, of course, is to throw this into your website or Webflow. If you need help with that, I actually made a video on using P5 as a website background. So that's all you need to get started with that. And then the other thing you would wanna do is that on the website here, 
This actually triggers when we scroll into view. So I would probably look at using Intersection Observer, which is a browser API that you can use to trigger this code to run as soon as we scroll into view within our viewport. So this is the Intersection Observer API, and it should give us some boilerplate code to run. So yep, these are our options, and we'll set the root to something like whatever, I think it's Canvas P5 is some class name or ID that they give the Canvas in P5. And then we'll set up our Intersection Observer with that um, options object right there. And you should be able to use ChatGPT to help you get that going. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.